a couple of announcements before we get uh, before we begin. The first thing is, as always, uh, our connection cards. If you are a first time guest, you should have received a blue connection card as you guys walked in. Um, if you are a first time guest, go ahead and fill that out. Um, as uh, at the end of the service, uh, take it over to the welcome table. And me, my, uh, myself, and my wife, Elise, the lady who was just singing up here, uh, we would love to get to know you, love to introduce ourselves to you, welcome you to the church. Um, everyone else, you know the drill. Uh, those connection cards are your way to communicate with us. If you've got prayer requests, information changing, whatever it may be, go ahead and fill that in on those connection cards. And then when the, um, when the offering baskets go by at the end of the service, go ahead and put those in the offering baskets. So, that's for people who are not first-time guests. Again, first-time guests, remember, at the end of the service, do not put it in the offering basket, but take it over there, and we will, uh, are excited to meet you. <clears throat> That's the first announcement. Second announcement is our gospel community sign-up. Uh, if you have not signed up for a gospel community yet, and you want to get connected to community, to friends, to all of that, I would encourage you guys to sign up for a gospel community. Our gospel community is started past week. Um, if you've missed out on that first week, don't feel discouraged. Don't feel like you can't do it. You know, sometimes when we do like these, these like weight training exercises, I'm, I'm this way. Like I got to start on Monday and I'm going to be consistent every day. And then like Wednesday comes and I miss and then I'm like, forget it. I'm not going to do it anymore. Um, <clears throat> and I give up. That's not good. And I don't want you to do that with these gospel communities. So if you have not registered for whatever reason, that's okay come uh, fill one of these out. There's a QR code. If, if that means anything to you, uh, go ahead and fill it out, the information there. Um, if not, uh, we have all the information here that you can fill out and, again, put this in the offering basket as it goes through, goes around at the end of the service. I'm excited about this, guys. Uh, our group did not meet this week. Um, some groups did. Some groups are waiting till February. But, man, I can't wait to start getting people back together in the homes uh, um, amongst other believers, you know, some people here at the church, and uh, man, it's just a great time. It's a great way to feel encouraged to build relationships, so get connected, get plugged in. Let's pray. <clears throat> Jesus, we thank you for this time. We thank you for allowing us to gather here on this Sunday morning, Lord. Uh, Lord, many of us uh, have, have been sick, have, have gotten through um, just this season of, of COVID and, and, and getting sick and, and feeling under the weather. And some of us are in that now and, and are not here with us this morning, Lord. But I just thank you that we get to gather, Lord. I thank you that the church is still moving on, Lord. We thank you so much for that. Uh, we thank you that we are able to gather here, Lord. I pray that you speak to us as we study your word. You speak to us, uh, Lord, speak through me. Lord, speak to us, grow us in your image. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> uh, so today we are going to take a break from Philemon. Uh, Randy has been preaching Philemon. Uh, he's going to do that today. He is out. He asked me to fill in for him. So we're going to be in, we're going to look at a passage in the book of John. Um, so if you have your Bibles, you can go to that. We'll get to that in just a, a bit, but it'll be John chapter 11. Um, but before we get into all that, <clears throat> um, under pressure, I heard this uh, as I was, uh, I've heard this in sports, I've heard this in the military, uh, I've heard this in life, and, and, and the saying goes that under pressure, right, humans don't rise to the occasion, so to speak. Humans kind of revert back to what's comfortable, revert back to what's familiar to them, what they're familiar with, right? And so... I'm saying all that because uh, when I, a few years ago, one of the things that I wanted to do, I was practicing and I still want to do this, is, is I, was, uh, I wanted to get uh, better at speaking Spanish. <laughs> um, I, you know, don't ask me how, I don't know, but I was born and raised in Brownsville. I went to Sharp, which I went to Cummings, I went to Porter, like I went to the schools that speak Spanish, um, and I did not learn Spanish. And so I was pretty disappointed about that. <clears throat> but I, I wanted to learn Spanish, and so it's been one of my goals, and I was like, all right, I'm going to learn Spanish, and so I, uh, I had Rosetta Stone. It's like this language learning software, 
and I was practicing Spanish, and I was like completing the, the lessons, and I was making progress, and there's the charts and all that stuff that you can follow, and, and I was moving along, and I was feeling pretty confident, right? And so that's a goal that I had, and then I was like, okay, I'm going to put this into practice, right? I'm going to, all the stuff that I've been learning, I'm going to try and implement it. And so I went to, uh, uh, I was coaching, some of y'all know this, I was coaching before I started working here. I was a high school coach and a teacher at Pace High School, and um, and so on Saturday mornings after our football games, all the coaches would get together and we'd break down film and we'd do all that stuff. But we would start those mornings with barbacoa, right? And so uh, we would order bar- barbacoa, right, barbacoa. Um, and it was always one coach's turn to order the barbacoa, right? So I was like, okay, cool. Uh, and always, they would always pick me to go first. Like, Billy, you're going to drop a whole bunch of money. Like, go, you buy the barbacoa. I was like, all right, man. Uh, and you got like 15 coaches, it's like six pounds of barbacoa, it's crazy, it's, it gets expensive quick. So anyway, it was my turn to go, <clears throat> and I was like, okay, I'm going to order the barbacoa, I'm going to do it all in Spanish, like I'm super confident. Uh, the place that I buy the barbacoa from was about 20 minutes away, so you know, on my way over there, I'm rehearsing my lines, I'm practicing, I'm getting ready to go, and you know, I pull up to the, to the window, and just as I'm... Uh, just as my turn, the lady opens the window and she asked me, you know, in Spanish, she says, what would you like to eat? And uh, like I froze, like I got so nervous and I was like, uh, completely aborted everything that I had been practicing. And I was like, can I have some barbacoa, please? <laughs> and uh, six pounds, whatever. She's like, sure, fine. <clears throat> but in that moment of pressure, in that circumstance that I found myself in, I reverted back to what I was familiar with. I didn't rise to that occasion. I reverted back to what I was familiar with. Now, I know this is a silly story, um, but this same concept is true in our faith. When things get tough in our lives, when when our circumstances uh, get tough, we, we, we go back to uh, what we are familiar with, right? We, we know what Christ has called us to. We've been Christians a while, but, but in, those, in those intense moments of pressure, all of us would love to say, you know, I did what I was called to do. I did what the Lord called us to. But oftentimes, we, we don't do that, and we revert back to living the way that we used to live. We lose sight of the fact that the the Lord is working all things out for good, right? For for His glory uh, and our good. We we lose sight of that, and we just desperately want the Lord to get us out of the circumstance that we find ourselves in. Now, as we go this morning, uh, what, 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 what I want us to see is what we want to do, what we want mostly to do, is we want God to change our circumstance. However, God, he, he wants to change our hearts. He wants to change our attitudes. He wants us to trust him. <clears throat> and that is what's happening in our story today. Um, the people in our story today are followers of Jesus, uh, but when their circumstances are less than ideal... They revert back to what they are familiar with, right? They don't trust God. They, 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 they pity. They, they, they worry mostly about themselves, right? We want, like I said, we want God to change our circumstances more than we want to actually trust Jesus. And, and, and because, because God is more concerned with our hearts, we should seek to trust him to look to him, to point to him in the midst of our circumstances. So I have a question for us. What circumstances are less than ideal in your life? Maybe maybe you're overwhelmed, overwhelmed at work. Maybe your personal relationships aren't what you wanted them to be, what you thought they would be. Uh, maybe the school year is getting a little bit out of hand. What circumstances are not ideal in your life? Whatever the case, whatever, whatever that circumstance is, God wants us to trust Him 
in our circumstances. So today we're going to look at a passage in, 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 <clears throat> in the Gospel of John. Uh, we're going to be in John chapter 11. So uh, if you've brought your Bibles, go ahead and open those. If you have your phone, it'll be projected up here on the screen. Um, I'm going to read it from my page. Uh, but we're going to be in John. Now John is, just real quick, John is uh, one of the four Gospels. There's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It was the last one uh, written. <clears throat> and the big emphasis in the, book, in the Gospel of John is John the writer wants people to see that Jesus is God. He is l- the Lord. It is, I mean, all the, all the Gospels obviously point to that, but, 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 but the Gospel of John has this emphasis on pointing, pe- uh, pointing Jesus to being God. That he wants people to see that. <clears throat> now, before we jump in, um, there are a couple of foundational things. This theme that we see in John is that, you see this in John 1, I think it's 9, uh, that, that, that Jesus came into the world. He came to his own people. The light was in the world. The light was with his people, but they did not see him. They did not recognize him. They pushed him away, right? That's constantly happening in the book of John. That's one thing I want us to, to, to be thinking about and then the other thing from the book of John is that everything that was written in this book, the story we're going to read today, and every story in the book of John was written so that we may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that, my, that by believing we may have life in his name. That's in John chapter 20. So in today's passage, we're going to study the story of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. Now that we're going to read the whole chapter, well, not the whole chapter, we're going to read most of the chapter, verses 1 through 44. It's a big chunk of scripture, um, <clears throat> but it's, it's good. I want us to focus in, I know these long passages, sometimes you can get distracted, really focus in to the story, focus in to what's happening uh, as we read through. So John chapter 11, verses 1 through 44, again, it's projected up here. The death of Lazarus. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So this is not Mary his mother, this is not Mary Magdalene either. This is also, uh, this is rather um, uh, Mary who is with Martha. So this is a third Mary. <clears throat> so the sisters sent to him, sent to Jesus, saying, Lord, he whom you love, Lazarus, is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. So as soon as Jesus hears of this illness, he doesn't rush to it immediately. He stays where he is at. Uh, then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. Let us go to where he is. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews We're just now seeking to stone you, and are you going to go there again? So Jesus had just healed someone. He he uh, he just performed a miracle. He healed someone, and people wanted to stone him. And Jesus saying, "We need to go back to that place. You want to go there again?" Jesus answered, "Are not are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night," He stumbles because the light is not in him. After saying these things, he said to them, Jesus said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. He's just, just taking a nap. He'll be all right. He will recover. Now, Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he meant taking rest and sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died, and for your sake I am glad that I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. 
So Thomas, called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us go that we may die with him. Man, it's a frustrating sentence for me. Um, Moving on. Uh, 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 Verse 17. So so they're going to go. And uh, it says, now then, verse 17, now when Jesus came, uh, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. But Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. <clears throat> Verse 28. When she, when she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in her house, consoling her, saw Mary rise quickly and go out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said, Lord, come and see. Verse 35, Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for it has been four days. Verse 40, Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I said this on the account of people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had seen these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out, his hands and his feet bound with linen strips and his face wrapped with cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. The word of the Lord to which I give thanks. And it's a good story. So the first thing I want to ask us, the first slide that I have for us is, Do circumstances determine our faith? Do my circumstances determine my devotion or my worship or my love for the Lord? All right, when things are going good, are are you relatively good? And when things are going bad, are you relatively uh, bad? Are you, you spiritually indifferent? Do our circumstances determine our faith? Now, there are two there are two situations here where circumstances are less than ideal. Right? The first one is, uh, the first instance is with the disciples. Right? The disciples have been following Jesus with him, uh, 
as he's been performing these miracles, as he's been, uh, you know, calling them into ministry and starting his ministry, he has been with them. <clears throat> and now Jesus is saying, hey, we're going to go to a place where we might die or, or where they want to kill us. And, and the disciples are like, hey, man, like, I don't want to go there. Let's not do that, Jesus. <laughs> it's been fun following you, but that I do not want to do. The second circumstance is the, the one, the obvious one in the story, and that's Lazarus dying and Mary and Martha um, dealing with that difficult circumstance. But in Mary and Martha's circumstance, they didn't necessarily, they didn't necessarily want to trust Jesus in that circumstance. They just didn't, uh, they, they just didn't want their they just didn't want Lazarus, their brother, to die. In both of these situations, in their circumstances, the disciples and Mary and Martha, in both of their situations, we see <clears throat> that they resulted or, or, or they uh, went back to what they were familiar with. Right When the heat in their life got uh, a little bit higher and the pressure uh, was a little bit uh, uh, more firm and more pressing, uh, they, 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 they reverted, they resorted back to what they were familiar with. In both of these situations, faith in Jesus was absent. <clears throat> do our circumstances determine our faith? We used to have larger bottles, and now we have these little ones. So. <laughs> um, do, do our circumstances determine our faith? This past two, about two weeks ago, Lisa and I, uh, COVID hit our house. <laughs> and um, fortunately, thank the Lord, it didn't hit our house very bad. Um, but we were at home like all the time. The whole week we were at home, and uh, it was sweet and it was fun, um, but our kids were home with us also, which it's still fun. I said but like it wasn't fun, but it was fun. Um, but but <clears throat> normally what Lisa and I will do is, you know, in the evening we'll get out of the house, we'll go to the mall, we'll go do something and kind of change the scene up a little bit. We could not do that that first week. We were stuck in the house, and, and there's only so many rooms like you can walk into in your house before you're like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do now, right? Um, so <clears throat> so uh, uh, as the week came to an end, we were excited to start the next week, which is this past week, back, you know, uh, back to normal, back to the way things had been, and getting ready, got our kids dressed for school. Monday morning, I, before we go, I, I take them to get tested, and William tested positive for COVID. I was like, dude, what's happening? So just when things were starting to look a little more free, a little bit like things were going to revert back to normal, it was like, no, you're actually, how, how difficult it got this first week, you're going to do that all over again. And when Lise heard the news, like she was immediately destroyed. Like it just, she was not looking forward to hearing that. She was not looking forward to being back home again. And I would love to say that under that circumstance, Lisa and I, we had faith in the Lord, and we were, man, Lisa's going to be great. We're going to get to grow in our relationship with each other. Like, the Lord has allowed us to stay home. It's going to be so sweet. But, man, that was not the case at all. About midway through last week, like, Lisa and I were just, like, not fighting, but just at each other's, like, necks. Like, we, ah, it's so frustrating. Um, part of it, I mean, it's my fault, but <clears throat> um, oh, it was, it was, it was, it was a, a challenging moment for us, a pressing moment. The circumstances uh, were less than ideal. And, and in that moment, as I said, I so desperately wanted the Lord to change our circumstances that I didn't even think to worship the Lord in that moment. We were defeated. We're good now. Uh, we're good now, but we were defeated, and we just want our, we wanted our circumstances to change. In that moment, our circumstance was de determining our faith, having an impact on our faith. 
The interesting thing is, and this is our second slide, the interesting thing is God doesn't promise to change our circumstances. He promises to change our hearts. He promises to change us, right? Jesus isn't hoping that our circumstance changes. He's hoping that our hearts change. Our hope should not be in a changed circumstance. Our hope should be in a good God, in a faithful God. This is where Lisa and I missed the mark. In verse 35, this is one of the most profound verses in Scripture. In verse 35, it says that Jesus wept. Right? Theologians have, have, have pointed to this verse to, to highlight the humanity of Jesus. There's a lot of good that comes from this verse. But one of the things that I was asking myself is, why did Jesus weep? Why was Jesus crying? People will say that he was crying because his good friend Lazarus was, uh, had, had died and he was sad because of that. But I, just, I don't find that convincing in this passage. Right? Jesus, at the very beginning, if you remember, in the first couple of verses in chapter 11, right, Jesus said, he's, this, Lazarus isn't going to die from this. He's not going to die from this illness. It's not going to kill him. And then he didn't immediately go to him. He waited. So I'm not convinced that that Jesus was crying because his good friend Lazarus had died. So why did Jesus weep? I believe that Jesus wept because when the circumstances heated up in Mary and Martha's life, they did not respond in faith. They responded with what they were familiar with. They were hopeless in their weeping. Now, if you look at the passage and, and if you read this, um, there is a word that describes Mary and Martha's weeping and crying, and, and there is a different word that they use to describe Jesus' weeping and crying. There's a distinction there. Now, that distinction is because in Mary and Martha's crying, uh, it, it's, it, the word is, used, is, def, is, is often used to describe people who are just wallowing in self-pity. They're, they, they, they're uh, in their circumstance. They can't see anything but their circumstance, and they are just weeping uncontrollably in that place. And Jesus is looking at them, and not to say that we shouldn't be uh, deeply moved by our circumstances and that our circumstances don't affect us, but as Christians, we have hope in Jesus. I believe that Jesus wept because He loves His people. He loves us. He hurts when we are lost. He hurts when we don't find our hope in Him. He hurts when in our circumstances we don't find comfort in Him. He wants us to have faith in Him. But oftentimes... We're not looking for that faith. We're just looking for a changed circumstance. So, what should we do in our circumstances? How can we um, express our faith in our circumstances? leads us to our next point, which is, I believe that we should point people to Jesus through our circumstances. So the difficult things that are going on in your life, the, the maybe uh, unbelievable things that are going on in your life, are we pointing people to Jesus in those circumstances? Or are we pointing people to the circumstances? In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Paul says this. He says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. 
All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against him, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. So Paul here in this uh, Corinthians passage, 2 Corinthians, he is saying that we have been been given the ministry to point people to Jesus. Don't look at, at my situation. Don't look at my life. Look at Jesus. Hey, if you're looking at me, don't look at me. Look at Jesus. He is where the answer is. Our lives are to point people to Jesus. God is making his appeal to the world through us, Christian. So who or what are we pointing people to? There is this idea in the book of John, this phrase that you see over and over again in the book of John. It's this phrase, it's come and see. Come and see. In John chapter 1, <clears throat> when Jesus starts calling his disciples, he calls uh, Philip, right? He calls Philip, and then Philip goes to call Nathaniel, and Philip tells Nathaniel, he's like, hey, Nathaniel, there's this guy that I just met. It's, it, I think it's the, the promised Messiah that's coming. I think it is him. And Nathaniel's like, is there anything good that can come from Nazareth? Nazareth? Is there anything good that can come from that place? And Philip says, come and see. Come and see. In John chapter 4, we see this famous story of the woman at the well. In John chapter 4. Now this woman, uh, she was a Samaritan woman. Uh, Just real quick, there is tension between the Jewish people and the Samaritans. There's this this, uh, racial tension. Uh, battle that goes on between them. And Jesus is speaking to this woman uh, alone at the well at noontime. Now, if you guys are familiar with the story, this is a story where uh, the woman has had many husbands, and Jesus goes to her and tells her uh, about all the husbands that she's had, and, and you know, she starts to break down, uh, <clears throat> and then she leaves, right? She, she, she's, she, she wasn't bro- bro- broken and destroyed and left, but she was so encouraged and she left. And it says, just then, in, in, in verse 27, it says, just then his disciples came back, right? He was by himself talking, ministering to this woman. The disciples came back. They marveled that he was talking with the woman, but no one said, what do you seek or why are you talking with her? So the woman left her water jar and went away to the town and said to the people, come see a man who told me all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? They went out of the town and were coming to him. They were in their, in their circumstance. The woman at the well was not pointing people to her life. She was pointing people to Jesus. Now, why is this interesting? In, in our passage today, in John chapter 11, we see in verse 34, it says, Jesus says, where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see And Jesus weeps, right? They are pointing people to their unfortunate circumstance. They are not pointing people to Jesus. In our circumstance, are we pointing people to the circumstance? Woe is me or woe is my life? Are we pointing people to Jesus, the light of the world? Mary and Martha were pointing to their circumstance. And oftentimes, I am in that boat. We are in that boat. But I want to encourage us to point to him in the good and in the bad. Point to him in the mundane of every day. So when, that, so when the storm comes, when the circumstances heat up, we can point people to Jesus. 
Now, now he might be thinking, we just talked about this, he might be thinking, but I can't, Billy, I can't. It's hard for me to point people to Jesus. <clears throat> and I understand. I understand. But as we just read from 2 Corinthians, Paul's words, Christian, we are a new creation. The old has passed away. The person that you used to be has passed away. You are a new creation in Christ. On our song that we sang just now, um, the, the chorus or the bridge was, let your fire fall down. That fire is representative of the Holy Spirit coming down and filling us. We have been filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Before, we were not able to walk in the way that Christ has called us to, and now, Christian, we are. We can because of the power of the Holy Spirit. We are a new creation. The old has passed away, and behold, the new has come. Christ's work in us allows us to follow him faithfully. I want to encourage us in that way this morning. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for um, just calling us to be ambassadors, Lord, calling us to reflect you to the, to the world, Lord. Lord, I pray that, that as we reflect you, Lord, I pray that we, as people come, as these people who don't believe in you, look at our lives, Lord. I pray that our lives are not reflecting our circumstances, Lord, but our lives are reflecting you, Lord. Lord, lead us in that way, Lord. Holy Spirit, give us the power to do this. When we are in those circumstances, when we don't want to look to you, Lord, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit draw us to be able to do it, Lord. Lord, your work on the cross, as we celebrate communion this morning, your work on the cross is what our hope is in, Lord. You dying for our sins on the cross is where our hope is found. Because if that didn't happen, Lord, we should just wallow in our self-pity and our unfortunate circumstances, Lord. But because you have died for us, you have come and you have taken our sin and taken our punishment and have given us righteousness, I pray that, 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 that we are compelled to, to um, follow you in that way, Lord. I pray things in Christ's name. Amen.